In this problem, we consider what happens when a DNA polymerase, which is shown here as the circle, operates on a piece of DNA that is fixed on both ends. In the first part of the problem, um, the DNA polymerase is actually free to rotate, so it has no torsional uh, constraint applied on it. And the other thing to notice is that there are long pieces of single-stranded DNA which are also free to rotate. And so in this first part of the problem, there's actually no constraint on the system whatsoever. The only piece in the puzzle here that, have might, uh, that might have torsional constraints is double-stranded DNA. Double-stranded DNA has uh, torsional constraints because the base pairs always want to maintain the angle of 35 degrees from one base pair to another, which optimizes the base stacking energy. So it's the base stacking energy that maintains, uh, or I'd say wants to make the twist of the DNA uh, as close as possible as in B-form DNA. But in this first part of the problem, because the polymerase is flexible and it can simply rotate around the DNA, uh, as it adds new nucleotides to the growing double strand, um, there is no torsional strain. Now, the next part of the problem uh, is more complicated because, as it uh, shows in the diagram, now the DNA polymerase is fixed. It cannot rotate. And so, and the other interesting thing here is that you'll see there's no single-stranded DNA on the left-hand side, so the polymerase cannot rotate, and the left-hand side is entirely double helical. And so let's analyze uh, what are the constraints of this problem in terms of the topology of DNA. The first thing to do is to ask what happens to the DNA as new nucleotides are added. So what we can see here in this diagram is a representation of what's happening at the polymerase, which I'll write as Paul and the ends uh, or the edges of the polymerase are fixed. So the only thing that can happen is that the DNA can translocate, but the polymerase cannot move. Now here is double-stranded DNA at the active site. And so the active site holds the ends of the DNA in a precise arrangement. After one nucleotide is added, you get the situation shown here where the newly added nucleotide has to move out to make room for the next nucleotide. You can think of the DNA polymerase as a motor. And the DNA, inside this motor, the DNA behaves like a screw inside a cork. The uh, DNA polymerase has grooves inside it which hold the DNA and it does so by behaving like a cork around the corkscrew, the corkscrew being DNA. So the DNA has to rotate. And let's think about whether it rotates in a right-handed sense or a left-handed sense. If it were to rotate in a right-handed sense that is opposite to the arrow, then it would simply move old nucleotides into the active site and uh, that's not going to open up room. So the only way that the polymerase can make room for the DNA, a new nucleotide to be added, is to rotate in a left-handed sense. By rotating in a left-handed sense, it'll move the, nu the nucleotide that was just added down one so that um, a new template strand nucleotide will come into place. So the key idea here is that the DNA must rotate in a left-handed sense. So now, let's take a look at the topological constraints on the DNA in this situation. And to do this, I'll uh, draw a very uh, simplified diagram showing only uh, a few turns of DNA. So let's go back, draw the second strand, which will be something like this. The key idea is that although DNA is fed into the double-stranded re region by the polymerase, these ends cannot rotate with respect to each other. Even though, as the polymerase works, it'll be feeding new DNA. So new DNA comes in, 
But because the polymerase holds these two ends, they cannot rotate. And since the, the polymerase is introducing rotation in a left-handed rotational sense, when it feeds the new DNA in, the consequence of this will clearly be that with time, the DNA unwinds. So where we originally had uh, three crosses of the DNA, so originally in this simple example, L equals to three, after some time, L will be two. So L decreases. Of course, in the actual problem, the number of crosses of the DNA will be very large, and so the linking number will continually decrease. Now, if the DNA were held in a plane, then L would, uh, L would decrease, as I just explained, the linking number has to decrease because um, the polymerase is unwinding the DNA. And if the DNA were held in a plane, that is, no topological relaxation process possible, then T would also decrease. Remember, remember that the linking number L is the overall rotation of one strand with respect to the other. And the twist is the local rotation from base pair to base pair of the strands about each other. And here, uh, so if DNA is held flat, L would go down, T would also go down, which is underwinding the DNA. The key idea to know in all problems involving DNA topology is that if you consider one base pair, then it is there's another base pair below it. And this angle is 35 degrees in relaxed DNA. And this is set by base stacking energy. It comes from the electrostatic uh, complementarity of the of the uh, bases with respect to each other. If anything is done to twist the DNA, so that, for example, this uh, base pair underneath, where rotated, such as when the DNA is twisted, uh, the linking number is changed then there will be a restoring force which restores the DNA back to 35 degrees. This is the fundamental force that's giving you the elastic rotational tension in DNA. So if DNA is not held flat, uh, but the end still cannot rotate, it's just that the DNA can flex between these uh, uh, ends, then L decreases because the polymerase is actively unwinding the DNA, but T would then increase. So twist increases. And it increases to restore 35 degree stacking angle. As long as the DNA is free to flex, then it will essentially undergo a writhe, which compensates uh, for the change in twist. And the writhe in this case will, um, so the writhe, W, will decrease to keep the linking number Uh, the same as it was before the twist increased. Now, in this problem, linking number continually um, uh, decreases, but for one step, the same. So what I'm trying to say here is that the right decreases to keep the linking number the same as what it is after one base pair is added. Now, for the next base pair that's added, the linking number will again decrease. The twist will go up to compensate and the right will decrease again. 
So for this problem, the conclusion is that linking number decreases continuously. The twist would also decrease continuously in lockstep with the link if the polymerase, uh, if the DNA were held flat, not allowed to, to uh, undergo any supercoiling, but because the base pairs want to maintain their angle, the twist will actually increase continually. It has to because the new base pairs want to be aligned just like in B-form DNA in a local sense, but the overall uh, curvature of the DNA will change and the writhe will therefore decrease continually. And so this is called negative supercoiling when the writhe decreases. And so the general conclusion is that in this case, the DNA will undergo negative supercoiling which is what happens in real life when a polymerase operates on DNA. The DNA that's formed in the double-stranded form behind the polymerase becomes negatively supercoiled.